morning students today we are going to know about the third in third sum unit 5 evolution first let us know about the origin of life first one theories of special creation according to bible the world was created in 6 days from the day of origin these organisms are unchanged this theory is purely a mythological belief and followed until middle of 19th century and theories of cosmozoa protoplasm uh, in this theory we know uh, we can observe that they saying that some of cosmozoa like cosmic dust through the cosmic dust some particles reach the earth in the form of spores germs and the simpler particles from there the life is originated and next theory theory of spontaneous generation or abiogenesis uh, this theory was uh, uh, says about uh, in this theory they says that life is originated from the non living things like from the mud of nail uh, frogs toads snakes these are arise like from manure worms arise like dew uh, slime and sweat from these insects are arise they are saying that the all living organisms are arise from the non living things and next theory of biogenesis in this genesis sorry in this theory they are saying that living organisms are originated from the pre existing the organisms which are existed previously firstly from that organisms uh, from that organisms next living organisms are originated next theory of castrotrophism it means castrotrophs means natural disasters in this theory they are uh, explaining that when the catastrophes are occur in the on upon the earth from the time to time uh, which uh, completes the uh, completely destroys the, all the organisms on the earth and again new organisms will appear on the earth and next last theory theory of organic or chemical evolution in this theory uh, they says about the this third one theory of spontaneous generation or abiogenesis they are explaining about that living organisms are arise from the non living things here uh, this is the experimental explanation about the uh, about the organic evolution here in the there there are two flask one is filled with boiling water and one is filled with the gases and in this we can absorb electrons are present this is the spark discharge here the gases are added we can observe what are gases ammonia methane hydrogen peroxide these gases are added when this boil when this water is boiled the uh, the water evaporates and uh, goes through this flask and uh, uh, get with the uh, spark discharge and mix with gases and later in this way they come to the uh, this way and uh, by the help of the condenser the gases condition uh, changes into water condition it condenses it next it cools the water and then again it is taken into comes into this way it, this is completely a cyclic process after the seven days of this experiment we can observe uh, the collected in this collected water some of the amino acids will be collected they are almost in this or uh, almost 20 of amino acids of which is present in the living organism we can observe in this uh, collected sample next theories of evolution lamarck theory he is the great naturalistic uh, lamarck sought a naturalistic explanation of the diversity of modern organisms and the animals seen in the fossil record he proposed the theory of inheritance of acquired characters in 1809 he postulates about four main things first one new needs second use and disuse of organs and fourth one inheritance of acquired uh, characters fourth one speciation in this uh, he explained about the new needs every organism changes its environment where changes in environment like uh, factors like light temperature food like that migration lead to origin of new needs to fulfill these new needs all living organism have to exert special efforts like changes in habits or behavior next use and disuse of organism like this if uh, the new habits involve the greater use of certain organs to meet new needs and the disuse or lesser use of certain other organism which are of no use in new condition 
Next, third one, inheritance of acquired characters. He believed that the favorable acquired characters are inheritable and are transmitted to the offspring so that these are born fit to face the changed environmental condition and the chances of their survival are increased. Next, speciation. Lama believed that in every generation, a new characters are acquired and transmitted to next generation so that new characters accumulate generation after generation after a number of generations, new species is formed. Next, evidences. Here we can observe that this is Xerophy. It and ancestors of Xerophys are supposed to be deer like quadrupedal grazing upon the grasses in Africa. They are look firstly they are supposed to look like a deer in uh, size. Uh, due to disappearance of ground vegetations and availability of trees, long-necked and long four-limbed giraffe developed from the short-necked and small four-limbed deer-like ancestors. At firstly, the giraffes are supposed to be like this deer-like uh, structures. After that, lack of this uh, vegetation, lack of this ground vegetations. Uh, for the availabilities of trees present on the long limbs, they developed their neck and the long forelimbs. That's why they, this is the evolution of Xerophy. He explained about this. Next, like their snakes. Ancestors of limbless snakes were lizard-like reptiles with fully developed pentadactyl limbs due to continuous disuse of limbs and stretching of their body to suit their creeping mode of locomotion. Limbless snakes uh, evolved. Next, horse. Ancestors of modern horse used to live in the areas with soft ground and were short leg with more number of functional digits. These gradually took to live in areas with the dry ground. This change in habit was accompanied by increasing length of legs and decrease in functional digits for fast running over hard ground. Next, significance of flammarchism. It was first comprehensive theory of biological evolution. It nicely explains the existence of vestigial organs in animals due to their discontinuous disuse. It explains the development of strong jaw muscles and claws in the carnivores due to their continued extra use. It stimulated other biologists to look for the mechanism of organic mechanism. Next, Darwinism. Proposed theory of natural selection and it was proposed by the Charles Darwin from the 1809 to 1888 and, and he is an English naturalist. He went on voyage on HMS Beagle and explored the South America, the Galapagos Islands and other islands. He was highly influenced by an essay entitled On the Tendency of Varieties on Depart, indefinitely from the original type by Alfred Russell Wallace and another essay, Principle of Geology, written by Charles Lyne. What happened to the giraffes? First, survival to the fittest or the natural selection. Natural selection said to the giraffes with short necks had less food to eat. In this previous uh, theory, we have uh, studied about that the giraffes are look like, uh, giraffes have short necks with, uh, and had less food to eat. Why the food resources change to leaves only on the upper branches. Next, what happened? The short eggs could not reach the upper branches, so and didn't survive. So it couldn't pass the genes to the next generation because it uh, they have survived. They had died with short necks. Long neck giraffes survived and reproduced due because they are able to reach the food. This is the diagrammatic representation of giraffe. How the short necks converted into long necks which is depends on the natural selection. This is the Darwin Finch. He explained about the adaptive radiation which means uh, based on its food they beak changes. We can observe the different shapes of the beaks which is helpful to eat the each type of food. Next, germplasm theory. We can observe in cytoplasm there, there are two cytoplasm. One is somatoplasm and is and next germplasm. In somatoplasm, it is like body cells, example skin, liver and eyeballs. In this germplasm, these are the sex cells, examples egg in female and sperm in male. The here DNA uh, here gets passed on to your onto the next offspring. 
It is proposed by the August Weissman, 1892, and cytoplasm divided into somatoplasm and germplasm. Essential features of theory: germplasm and somatoplasm. Through germ cells, male or female fuse to form zygote. A continuity of germplasm is maintained from generation to generation. Presence of determinants. Characters of organism represented in determinants. The determinants which are equivalent to genes. A struggle from struggle among determinants. Exist a sort of struggle in the germ cells for food, growth, multiplication. As a result, weaker determinants get perished and the stronger ones get dominated. Next, immorality of germplasm. Germplasm is immortal because it perpetuates from one generation to the next, but the somatoplasm is immortal and it dies with the death of the organism. Objections. Uh, some uh, no evidence is that uh, determinants show struggle for existence. There is no evidence for this theory of germplasm theory. And next, according to this theory, there should be definite variations in the germplasm in particular direction. It is not observed in each and every case. Next, mutation theory. Uh, here, uh, we can observe that normal plant like evening primrose, Onothera lamarckiana, about 50 50,000 specimens are self-pollinated. From the seeds, they some majority of plants get normal plants, but some of the plants get different plants. About 800 plants are different plants. Again, these uh, different plants are get self-pollinated, and we get, we get different plant in majority and more different plant from fewer. By this mutation theory. The change in the DNA uh, gives the st different structure of the organisms. Likewise, in the differences in the gene, changes in the gene, the mutations in the genes causes the different structure of the uh, organisms. Like these uh, sheep has a longer uh, but here there are no. This one is short, but in this tiger we can observe the different color variation because they they have the gene mutation that's why they have different color of colors of the tigers next modern synthetic theory it is the basis provided by dobensky in 1937 in the book genetics and origin of species Desi designated as so by huxley in 1942 final shape by muller and the phase five basic processes first one gene mutation next chromosomal aberration next recombination next natural selection and next isolation first gene mutation likewise uh, in the previous slide we, we have uh, studied about the mutation theory it is a sudden change in gene structure of arrangement bringing permanent phenotypic changes in the individual in this uh, in dna they have some changes in the dna structure that's why it uh, uh, finally bringing the permanent phenotypic changes in in a uh, in individual chromosomal aberration it is the change in structure and number also in this we can observe in gene mutation only structure will or arrangement is changed but in chromosomal aberration the number of the chromosomes are also changed recombination it is the process of exchange in this uh, the dna fragments are exchanged between non sister chromatids of homologous chromosomes due to crossing over next natural selection it is the selection of individual possessing adaptive characters by environment as the fittest to survive isolation it is the mechanism of separation of interbreeding amounts among con specifies next hardy weinberg the hardy weinberg principle is a way to measure if populations are evolving or not it is a way to compare allele frequencies in a population over time there are two equations that can be used if a population is in hardy weinberg equilibrium here there are, in this point we, we have seen that there are two equations. One is p plus q equal to 1. Next one, p square plus 2pq plus q square equal to 1. For this, p plus q equal to 1, if there are only two alleles, 
for it right in a population then the frequency of dominant allele is represented by p and the frequency of recessive allele, allele is represented by q when the purple is dominant to pink this is the equation is used next second equation p square plus 2 pq plus q square equal to 1 if there are only two alleles for it right in a population then the p square is called, called as frequency of homozygous dominant genotype and next to pq it is the frequency of heterozygous conditions we know that uh, we know the difference of homozygous and heterozygous this 2 pq is a frequency of heterozygous genotype and next finally q square frequency of homozygous recessive phenotype equal to 1 this is the Hardy-Wienberg uh, equilibrium is completely based on five exceptions. First one, this is random mating. This should be, should not be in should be in random mating. And next, there should be a large populations. There should not be any natural selection. There should not be no mutations in the population. There should not be any migration. Next, forces of evolution. Isolating mechanism, a mechanism that prevents two populations from interbreeding and thus enables the population to diverge enough to allow separate species to evolve. In this isolating mechanism, we can observe there are two that is geographical and reproductive. And reproductive is again divided into two classes pre-mating or pre-zygotic and next post-mating or post-zygotic. In pre-mating we can observe habitat, seasonal, seasonal mechanisms, ethological isolating mechanism and mechanical isolating mechanism. In this post-mating we can observe gamete morality mechanisms, zygote morality mechanisms, hybrid sterility mechanisms. Next genetic drift. Genetic drift is the change in the frequency of an existing gene variant in the population due to random chance in this we can observe that if change in allele frequency due to a chance of even if some of uh, there are 5 is to 5 red bugs are present in blue bugs are 5 present if some of the like 4 of the blue bugs are uh, uh, stopped by any chance of the any uh, outer action the gene frequency will changes into 10 is to 2 ratio this is called genetic drift next natural selection natural selection is a mechanism of evolution organisms that are more adapted to their environment are more likely to survive and pass on the generation that aided their success this process causes species to change and diverge over time in this we can observe the ancestor finch which is present in the earlier ages the finch the beak is look like this and next after the uh, changes in the environment uh, like uh, food based on food the beak shape of the beak is changed into this the insect eating beak will be like this the birds with uh, this type of beak is like woodpecker type like insect eating in this type of beak there's, these are seed eating birds next speciation speciation is how a new kind of plant or animal species is created speciation occurs when a group within a species separates from other members of its species and develop its own unique characteristics here we can observe two types allopatric and sympatric allopatric speciation occurs when geographical isolation creates a reproductive barrier in this we can observe this is the geographical by the change in the land geographical isolation the barrier is formed between the reproductive barrier sympatric speciation occur when the reproductive barrier is created by something other than geographical isolation not the geographical um, isolation something is came under this speciation that creates a change in the speciation Thank you.